we want to have a little fun with the stereotype that Portland is a hipster city. For your quick fire challenge, we want you to create a dish that features some of the ingredients you see here, which also have a rep for being a hipster ingredient. We have hemp oil, almond flour, various milks, kombucha, all the favorite ingredients from your childhood. <laughs> He has a lot of different kind of milks. There's a rare milk that we have on here that's derived from milk. It's dairy milk. Okay. <laughs> All right, chefs. You have 30 minutes for oh, this. No, no. I'm so sorry. I would, I would love to do this. <laughs> sure, of course. All right, chefs. You have 30 minutes. But we have to remember, you have no access to the hotline. <laughs> and you can only use this vintage equipment in the Top Chef kitchen. You can't phone a friend. <laughs> Wrong show. No hotline? What? Only the white stoves. No joke? We have to use all electric stoves. I don't like it. I like fire. I have matches tattooed in my arm, for God's sake. All right, chefs. And your time starts now. now. I can't get inside. Oh, anyone has coconut milk? Some cliches of being a hipster. Skinny pants. Man bun. A pseudo grava thing. Gluten free vegan. Single speed bicycles. <laughs> Tastes like ass. Ew. It's some kind of a whisking thing. So I'm using it as a food processor to make this aioli. Now I immediately grab a, a mold made in the form of corn cobs. I'm making a quick bread made out of fonio and semolina. It's kind of like cornbread, except with no corn. Yeah. I got hemp seed oil and almond milk. I'm trying to make a dumpling. <laughs> I'm making a spicy nutty green bean. I'm just trying to make sure I use a lot of these hipster ingredients. Jamie, how's that working? I don't even know. Twerk, twerk. A little under 20 minutes, guys. Last time I saw a stove top like this was when I was in New York City. <laughs> I think I had one of these in one of my apartments and uh, it's a pain in the ass. It's either really hot or not hot enough. Apparently I don't know how to work a blender from 1970. Okay, watch out now. <laughs> <laughs> 10 minutes on the dot. You're the best. Coming through super hot. Oof. It's definitely taking much longer to sear the cauliflower using the electric coils than it would on the gas burners. Let's see what happens. 350. Come join me over here. Yeah. Please be finished. One minute left. Wow, he waited to the last second. Three, two, one. Time's up, hands up, utensils down. Woo, that was fun. Gabe, come on up. Ooh. Today I prepared a kombucha braised Portland sausage or purple yam with some crispy yam skins. The yam I cut into like Hasselback. Wait, excuse my ignorance, but what's Hasselback? Just the cutting, the way it's like. How do you not know what Hasselback is? I know you. It's like this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I prepared a spicy nutty green bean with dehydrated watermelon, toasted almonds, uh, sauteed with sunflower oil, and uh, pickled beets and asparagus. Can I see your hand, Shoda? I always forget what I put. Not embarrassing at all. <laughs> well, that is hipster. Yes. <laughs> it's not hipster until you get that as a tattoo. <laughs> Thank you. I made a mixed mushroom pickled asparagus dumpling and underneath hemseed oil vinaigrette. What are these things? They're turnips. I did Turn up. Did you hassle back them? <laughs> <laughs> now I did. <laughs> Super hot, be careful please. I made a tomato soup with coconut milk and harissa and tomato peel cardamom crumble. I love it. Great. How are you today? Thank you. I made a play on cornbread with ponio and semolina with pancetta jam, pear butter, and goat butter as well. Do I have anything in my face? No. Ooh, it's very pretty. Wow. This is variations of cauliflower with purple cauliflower jardinara and black garlic and sauerkraut aioli. Is this the black garlic here? The yes. Sauce? Okay. We're gonna take a half an hour break. <laughs> Thank you. Finally, some actual protein. <laughs> what did you make for us? Pansier striped bass with braised and grilled endive, finger limes, and salsa of pickled beets, cherries, and hemp seed oil. 
Thank you, Byron. Thank you. Thank you. Fred and Carrie, how do you think our chefs did? We loved all of them. We really did. I would have sat and ate the entire dish if I wasn't on camera, so. <laughs> <laughs> Who had one of our least favorite dishes? Jamie. The dumpling was a little chewy, unfortunately. But it was great. <laughs> Chris, it was just like a little bit salty. It fell short a little bit on texture. But you seem so nice. <laughs> <laughs> and now for some good news. Who had one of our favorite dishes of the day? Gabe, I really loved the purple yam. There was like a sense of humor to it, and my whole life I've been such a fan of Hesselbeck knife work. <laughs> so, finally. <laughs> Thank you. Maria, with the soup, just a really rich and complex take on a classic. I like that it was spicy, but also that it had that cotilla cheese. It was just like a nice surprise in it. Thank you very much. Dawn with your play on cornbread was so, so good. I liked that it was a little bit sweet. I actually found it really fun. It was just a joy to eat. Thank you. Okay, so who had our favorite dish of the day? All right, so the chef with our favorite dish of the day took the concept of the hipster and made it feel fresh and innovative. The chef with our favorite dish is... You know what? Pack your knives. <laughs> You're not supposed to see. No, no, I just no, just nicely pack them. Pack, pack your knives just, and you know you never know. You got to have a go bag. <clears throat> oh, sorry. oh, sorry, so sorry. It's Dawn. <laughs> I got one. <laughs> you just won an advantage in the next elimination challenge. It really feels good because I'd never won before, and I've always been really close, but I felt confident about this dish, so I'm really glad. <laughs>